Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. Today, what I'm going to do is go through a PyoSolver analysis of the hand I went through in last week's video. So if you haven't seen that yet, uh, I'll post a link at the top of the screen right now. Let's do a quick recap on the hand. We as Hero open uh, from the cutoff, big blind calls. Uh, on the flop, we bet quarter pot on this Queen Jack 7 two tone or flush draw board. And the big blind calls. Uh, the turn is a five of clubs. Hero goes for the over bet and the big blind calls. And then on the river is the king of hearts and hero goes for the overbet jam and villain makes the call. So we will go and have a look at results shortly. Um, but before that, we're going to go through and have a look at the, uh, the solution and what we should be doing for this particular line. So the key thing in that last video was thinking about the kind of hands that we actually land on this river with to make sure that we're not just like plucking hands out of thin air, you know, looking at it just on the river. We want to make sure that we uh, actually have the hands that we think we have uh, for this particular line. So the line was, remember, quarter pot on the flop, over bet turn, and then over bet jamming on the river. All right, so let's take a look at the hand in Piosolver. Okay, so in the last video, I talked about how I believe this board was pretty good for us. Uh, so let's have a look and make sure that's actually true. We can see that we have 60% equity out of position, then it's going to have the rest, which is 40%. Uh, if I bring in Range Explorer and have a look at the very strong hands, two pair plus, you can see that as a proportion of our range, it's 5.3% of our range is two pair plus and just 4.3 for the out of position player. So what this means is we have an equity advantage and a two pair plus advantage, sometimes called a nut advantage. And we are then going to do lots of betting on this board. And that's that's what it looks like here on Pio. So you can see that uh, we do some big betting, 32% big betting, 55% small betting and 13% check. Now, if you're uh, new to Pio, what this is basically telling us, uh, green is check. This sort of light pink uh, salmon color is a small bet and the darker red color is the big bet. And this is gonna map you know, onto all of the hands that we could possibly have in this situation. So you can see that we do you know, mainly small betting, but there is some big betting as well. So first of all, we wanna see, okay, which hands are we gonna go for a small bet with? So what we can do, bring up Range Explorer again, and we can cycle through all the different hands. So you can see that Queens and Jacks, for sure, we could be getting to the turn with with those hands and maybe some sevens as well but looks like there's some big betting going on as well queen seven and jack seven for sure but looks like queen jack is mainly going to go for the big bet so again when we think about you know the river and having some hands that we bet small then over bet turn and then over bet jam river we don't have a lot of queen jacks because they're actually using the bigger bet on the flop you know you see a little bit of small betting but but not that much uh, when it comes to over pairs, again, like they're using like the, the bigger sizing mainly and just a little bit of small betting. So we don't have too many of those by the river either. Uh, top pair hands, we're going to do some smaller betting. The weaker the kicker looks like, but really just a, a mix, I would say. Uh, second pair, we're going to do some small betting. So we could definitely have a hand like King Jack, for example, so far. Uh, but we've got to see what we do on the turn with that hand as well. Uh, so yeah, it looks like some Jack X is getting bet for a small size. Third pair as well, going for a small size and some checking going on here too. Low pairs looks like uh, we're sort of betting D-linearly, I would say, that like betting twos a lot more frequently than pocket sixes. So uh, that's good to see. Um, but again, like thinking about hands that we have for a small size, we're going to have, you know, a decent chunk of these, these pairs, but maybe we don't over bet them on the turn. We'll have to wait and see. Ace high is going to do a lot of small betting as well. Uh, King highs, decent amount of small betting, but some big betting as well. So we don't, you know, we don't get to the turn with a full frequency of all of these because there's some checking and some big betting as well. And then when it comes to nothing type hands, you can see again a decent amount of of small betting. When it comes to draws, again real mix with sizes. Uh, combo draws, not doing a lot of checking though, so we could have a decent number of combo draws. Could have a decent number of flush draws as well. Uh, a out straight draws, same thing going on, but there is some more big betting I would say going on here. And then four out straight draws seems to be a, a real mix too. So, so far we can have a lot of different hands. The kind of hands that we, I guess, don't really have are the hands that are bet for a big size very, very frequently, like aces and kings, like queen jack. And then there's some, you know, a selection of other hands as well. So we go for the small bet and the big blind calls. The turn is the five of clubs. He actually does some leading here, but he went for the check. And so now we've got three different bet size options. And someone did comment 
in the last video asking, you know, if we had a small bet, surely we can we can bet more hands. And you can see that on the five of clubs, we really don't do any small betting. And I think if we pull up uh, this comparison, that we're only going to see small betting on certain diamonds, uh, yeah, diamonds cards. So let's have a quick look at that, see if that's true. So you can see a lot more of the darker red, the darker the colour, the bigger the bet. Uh, and you can see that the smaller betting, ace of diamonds, king of diamonds, maybe a bit of jack of diamonds, ten of diamonds as well. But we really don't see any small betting uh, on on a non-diamond. I mean, maybe we see a little bit on the you know ace of hearts here, for example. So an ace or a king uh, that's not diamonds. But really, you can see that the the smaller bets are reserved for the diamond turn, and then the bigger bets for for everything else. And you know, we on the five of clubs. We're going to see, you know, some big betting and some some over betting. If you haven't seen this window before, it's really really useful. It really just, you know, helps you see which cards you should be betting a lot on the turn, which cards are going to be better for you. Uh, so, for example, you can see that the ace gets bet a lot here. So we have a look at imposition equity. You can see it's the best card possible for us, and therefore, you know, it makes sense to do a lot of betting on that card. And you can see like there's more red in here, more betting going on than checking, and it's the highest. Uh, betting frequency of of all the cards that could possibly come down on the turn so yeah i really appreciate that comment and that question and uh yeah shout out to you guys for all your comments in the last video that was really really good and really love it so yeah shout out to you guys thank you uh so let's have a look here then so we're going to do some big betting and some over betting so in that last video i said a hand like for example king jack we wouldn't go for the over bet and the same with pocket queen so let's just see if that is actually true so King Jack off here, you can see that goes for the big bet. So what this window is basically showing us is we've got the over bet size, the big bet, the small bet, and a check. So you can see that there is some big betting, that's this red color here, um, but there's also quite a lot of checking when we don't have the King of Diamonds or the King of Clubs. But when we do have the King of Diamonds, King of Clubs, there's a lot more big betting, but there's no over betting. So we're not getting to the river for the line that we took with a hand like King Jack, all right? Same thing goes for pocket queens, again, using the big bet, as you can see, but not using the over bet. So what kind of hands are we actually over betting with in, in this spot? And remember, we, we want to focus on value hands as well as, as, as bluffs, right? Um, so you can see that pocket jack sometimes goes for the big bet, sevens for sure, uh, pocket fives sometimes as well, uh, two pair, jack seven, uh, if we did have a bit of queen jack, we could go for the over bet here. But remember that we were mainly going for a big bet with that on uh, on the flop. Um, over pairs then, again, like if we did go for that small bet on the flop a little bit of the time, we get to over bet now. But again, like it's going to be uh, very few combos, so not too, too fussed with that. King queen, though, seems to be the standout one right now. We're going to be betting ace queen as well. But yeah, when we look at ace queen, do we over bet jam that on the river? We'll have to wait and see, but my guess is probably not. Uh, we've got some other Queen X hands in here, but I think that King Queen is probably the only pair that we jam the river because all the others suddenly, you know, get downgraded to uh, to a second pair by the river. Uh, so some second pair hands, we don't do any big uh, some over betting, so I think we should move on. Third pair, then we're now just going for a check. So because we're either going for the big bet or the over bet. We have a very polarized betting strategy. And what that means is we're going to bet our value hands that start at you know our best Jack X hands for value. And then anything weaker than that, we are actually going to start checking. So if we're going to have a look at you know, weaker uh, Jack X hands, you know, not all Jack X hands are, are betting. There's a, a lot more betting going on with like King Jack and Ace Jack. But then hands like Jack Six and Jack Nine Off, they go for uh, for a check. So you can see that all of a sudden you've got some, you know, so a lot of hands that we go for a lot of bets with, as you can see, like lots of red in here and a little bit of check. And then all of a sudden, once we get down to top pair and then second pair, we can start to see a lot more checks creeping in. So now we've got all of the checking region somewhere in the middle. Uh, polarized, just to sort of recap that, polarized betting strategy means to bet your best value hands and then your bluffs as well. So we want to see like what kind of hands we, we get to bluff with. So there is actually some over betting here with like king five of diamonds, ace five of diamonds, ace five of spades, ace five of hearts as well. Uh, some some great over bets here with ace five off with the ace of clubs, looks fantastic. And let's have a look at some other ace highs. So again, like using the, the blockers, like the blocker to the nut flush draw, for example, is used quite a lot in uh, in these examples. Uh, so yeah, we, we do have some some overbetting here in this category, this ace high category. And you can see ace two, ace three, ace four. These are sort of 
very unnatural bluffs. So we'll get to the really natural bluffs in a minute. The combo draws, the flush draws, the eight out straight draws, the four out straight draws, they're going to be what we might class as natural bluffs, like semi bluffs, like very obvious bluffs. But I think these hands here are the ones that really aren't that obvious at all. So uh, these are the ones that, you know, you can, uh, if you can find, brilliant. Um, but, you know, this is probably one reason why you should overfold to triple barrels, especially for these sizes, because your opponents are not finding, you know, an overbet with a hand like ace three of hearts here when it's, you know, two diamond, two club boards. Um, just to sort of think about why this is happening, we have fantastic unblockers in this in this spot. So I talked about what blockers were in the last video. Um, but unblockers, we want to basically unblock our opponent's folding range in this uh, in this example. I mean, some of the bluffs we block their continuing range, which is good. So it means they have fewer hands that they can continue. But here we actually just want to unblock folds, and so the you know the the two is just like is really just not you know interacting with our opponent's range at all. So they're going to end up folding a lot more frequently. Uh, let's have a look then. Some king highs get to do a decent amount of overbetting here. So this is pretty interesting to see actually because we do land on the river uh, with top pair with a lot of these bets, but I'm not sure that we actually get to overbet jam all of them. I think it would be probably too thin, but again, we'll have a look in a moment. And then there's some nothing type hands as well. Some of these, I mean, these are gonna be uh, gut shots, to be honest, uh, so we should, uh, or flush draws. So let's have a, let's quickly move on to to those. So decent amount of combo draws getting overbet here. So you've got some, some ace 10, some king 10, some 10-9, uh, little bits of, of other stuff. When it comes to flush draws, there's some overbetting going on as well. Uh, you can see some king five of diamonds like we talked about before, some other flush draws, ace high and king high flush draws, and some uh, top pair with a flush draw as well. You can see here queen 10 of clubs, for example, or king queen of clubs. Just has you know so much equity that really just wants to uh, you know put a lot of money in. So eight out straight draws, quite a lot of checking now. Uh, we do get to, to bet 10, nine, king 10, for example. So again, this is a hand that lands on the river now with top pair, but it might be, you know, I don't want to spoil anything because I haven't looked at it yet, that we, we don't get to jam this hand for value because it's too thin. Maybe we choose a smaller bet size, I'm not sure. And then uh, we, yeah, we get to do some some overbetting here with, with ace, king, ace, 10, king, nine again as well. And you can see that the most common ones coming through here, are the ones when we have a diamond or a club or both, when, you know, if I just do this, you can see like spades and hearts gets checked, but then one diamond gets bet a little bit at the time. When we have diamonds and clubs, we get to bet, you know, very frequently, as you can see down here. Okay, so we did go for the overbet and our opponent calls. And the river was the king of hearts. And now you can see all of the hands that we land on this river with. Uh, so for example, like a hand like king 10, I just talked about, we don't go for the overbet. So we don't have that in our value jamming range. But we have lots of other hands that we could possibly have. Um, so I just click normalize here so it makes everything a bit bigger so you can see it and visualize it a lot easier. So then let's have a look then at the river strategy. So we are going to have some straights, but it's only three combos. These are the hands that we we could possibly have. Uh, sets then we're going to have jacks, sevens and fives. There's uh, a bit of kings, but remember that we would mainly bet this for a big size on the flop. So therefore that's why it's, there's hardly any of it left here because we went for the small size on the flop. Uh, jacks though, we could take this line, sevens we could take this line, fives we could take this line for sure. Some two pairs then, king queen, a uh, little bit of queen jack, there's some jack seven suited for sure. So like two pairs from the flop that weren't queen jack. Uh, then we improve on, on some of these hands as well. You know, like we overbet king five of diamonds, for example. And you can see that, that you know, we have that a lot more frequently than king five of spades. When it comes to over pairs, you know, again, like aces, I think if I unnormalize this, you, you, know, you can see it like drops away. We, we really just don't have that many aces for this line. We would generally go for the bigger bet on the flop and, but we went for the small bet. So we ha only have a little bit of that. And as you can see, like 1.1 combos, uh, top pair then ace king, we do get to jam, but again, we don't necessarily take this line. Second pairs, we're just going to check third pairs don't really have because we would have checked them on the turn. Low pairs then, okay, so we're now getting into some some bluffs here. So we're actually jamming ace five, blocking some two pair type hands. And we get to jam these ace x hands in here as well, and some offsuit as well. There really aren't that many combos. You can see like 4.9 combos. Uh, so again, like for this particular line, we don't have them at full frequency. Uh, nothing type hands, we're gonna pull the trigger with some, you know, some real bluffs here 
uh, which is which is pretty interesting. And that's yeah, that's basically it, guys. So we we do have a decent number of hands here. Well, 19.6 combos to go ahead and jam, but we don't have any hand really. Uh, I think at full frequency, like every single hand gets bet for a slightly different size at some frequency along the way. All right then, so time for the big reveal. Let's see what both players had. I had the mighty 9-8 of diamonds for the bluff and our opponent had 10-9 off for the rivered straight. So really quickly, let's just go to the Pio analysis again and just see like is 9-8 of diamonds, was that a good bluff? And was 10-9 off a good call on the turn? And I think the answer is no to both of those questions. Okay, so first of all, you can see that 9-8 of diamonds shouldn't land on this river. You can see there's hardly any of the 9-8 of diamonds left. So probably I made a mistake somewhere along the line. Let's have a look at the flop. So flop, we can do some small betting. That seems fine. But then on the turn, you can see that we do big betting or check. We don't really do any over betting. So again, you can see 3.1%. 3, 3 so we really just don't land on the river with 9-8 of diamonds. So if, I think, yeah, I've made a mistake in this hand and don't and yeah, shouldn't, be, shouldn't be bluffing this hand. And then by the time we get to the river, you can see there's hardly any combos left. Uh, but if we did land on this river, we only get to jam it 9.5% of the time and bet half pot 90% of the time. But yeah, so I made a mistake on the turn with that particular combo. Let's have a look at our opponent though. So we overbet the turn and he had 10.9 off. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that looks like pure fold to me on the turn. So I remember this hand and I was thinking, you know, that's a really, really poor poor call. I think this is a good example of where you're just like, wow, the guy's made a really bad call, drills it on the river, and there's not really much you can do. But that absolutely is because I made a mistake in this hand. And that's why we do analysis like this, because we want to get better and to, to make sure that we're not um, you know, not punting. But yeah, I definitely didn't expect him to have 10-9 off for, for this line. As you can see, like that's a hand that should be folding on the turn versus the overbet. Uh, if we go for a slightly smaller size, you get to, you know, he gets to continue more frequently. But yeah, I think this is, you know, a good example of um, somebody making a, you know, making a mistake. And, you know, when we jam river, obviously, like, he's supposed to call 100% of the time, but you can see there's no, there's, there's no color in here, which means that he shouldn't be landing on this river with any combos of 10-9 off. So yeah, for sure, like disappointing hand, but really important to make sure that you're, you know, not just blaming someone else's poor call on the turn for your poor play. Like I made a mistake in this hand by bluffing 9-8 suited. I uh, should have gone for a big bet on the turn or a check. I think it's absolutely fine to do that. Uh, but we, you know, I am definitely over bluffing in this situation. We looked at all the hands that we could bluff and I'm definitely, uh, yeah, bluffing too many hands. All right, guys, so we're going to wrap the video up there. Uh, thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. If you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button as well. I'll be back soon with a brand new video, but until then, take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.